The Garima Gospels consist of a pair of ancient Ethiopian Gospel books. Among these, Garima II, the earlier manuscript, stands as potentially the earliest surviving fully illuminated Christian manuscript. Monastic records indicate that these works were likely composed around the year 500, a timeline supported by recent radiocarbon analysis. Samples from Garima 2 point to a dating range of 390 to 570, while samples from Garima 1 suggest a span of 530 to 660. Together, these two manuscripts hold paramount importance in attesting to the Ethiopic rendition of the Gospels. They have served as foundational references for crafting critical editions of the Ethiopic Gospels, undertaken by scholars such as Rakas Zermond and Michael G. Wexler. As a result, they offer insight into the early Byzantine textual tradition of the Gospels, standing as some of the earliest extant versional examples. Notably, they rank as the oldest known Ethiopian manuscripts, a distinction acknowledged by contemporary scholars. It's noteworthy that prior Western scholarship had erroneously placed both Gospels in a period around 1100 CE or later, an assumption based on paleographic analysis. The Abba Garima Monastery in Ethiopia is the repository for these Gospel books. Remarkably, there is no record of these manuscripts ever having left the confines of the monastery. However, considering the historical context of Muslim occupation in the surrounding region from the 9th to the 14th centuries, there is a possibility that they may have been concealed within a cave during this period, only to be rediscovered later. While the Gospels were featured in the catalogue of an American museum exhibition titled African Zion, The Sacred Art of Ethiopia, which toured from 1993 to 1996, they were not actually lent for display. According to monastic tradition, these Gospel books are attributed to Saint Abba Garima, who is said to have arrived in Ethiopia in 494. Saint Abba Garima is recognized as one of the nine saints traditionally believed to have originated from Rome, likely referring to Syria. These saints are credited with the Christianization of the rural communities within the ancient Ethiopian realm of Aksum during the 6th century. The monks of the monastery hold these Gospels less as mere historical artifacts and more as revered relics of Saint Abba Garima. As per the tradition, it is recounted that Abba Garima wrote and illustrated the entire Gospels in a single day, with divine intervention suspending the sunset until his work was done. While definitive radiocarbon tests lend support to the dating of Garima II to the 6th century, recent research contradicts several aspects of the traditional narrative. Proposals put forward suggest that the textual foundation for the Garima Gospels is Greek rather than Syriac, that the visual and scriptural elements find inspiration in Egyptian rather than Syrian sources, and that the Gospel translation seen in the Garima Gospels predates the conventional timeline associated with the Nine Saints. Additionally, the formerly held belief in the Syrian origin of the Nine Saints has been largely dismissed in current scholarship, Manuscript Description The Garima Gospels consist of two distinct manuscripts, Garima I and Garima II, with Garima II believed to be the earlier of the two. In earlier sources, Garima I was denoted as Garima I, while Garima II was labeled as Garima III. An additional Gospel book, likely from the 14th century, was once bound with Garima II prior to recent restoration, earning the designation Garima II. However, modern restoration efforts have meticulously separated these three books, restoring their original order and volumes, and repositioning numerous folios and miniatures that had become disarranged over the passage of time. Garima I contains 348 extant pages, commencing with 11 illuminated canon tables arranged in arcades. Following these, the Gospel texts are presented in Guizhi, the language of the ancient kingdom of Aksum from the 4th to the 7th centuries. 
Guizi has since persisted as the religious language of the Ethiopian church. On the other hand, Garima II, also in Guizi, spans 322 pages and was transcribed by a different scribe. This manuscript features 17 illuminated pages, including finely crafted portraits of the evangelists prior to their respective gospels. Additionally, a distinct portrait of Eusebius of Caesarea is positioned ahead of his canon tables. The portraits of Matthew, Luke, and John share a frontal presentation and are minimally distinct. In contrast, Mark's portrait depicts him in profile, seated on the episcopal throne of Alexandria. Another illuminated page captures the imagery of the Temple of Solomon or, alternatively, the Fountain of Life. Of note, this portrayal showcases an uncommon staircase design that remains distinctive in Christian iconography. The illuminated miniatures adhere to a broadly Byzantine style and exhibit stylistic coherence indicative of a 6th century origin. While the textual content was certainly penned in Ethiopia, some scholars, including Marilyn Heldman, previously proposed that the illuminated pages might have been imported as pre-made components from ancient Syria or Egypt. However, Jacques Mercier now asserts that both the textual content and the illuminations were created within Ethiopia. Differences in the texts between the two manuscripts suggest that Garima I does not directly descend from Garima II. This discrepancy implies that their shared translation likely traces back to a notably earlier source, indicating the potential antiquity of the Ethiopian Gospel translation beyond prior assumptions, both manuscripts lack a colophon. However, in Garima II, formerly bound with Garima II, historical notes are found on two inserted leaves at the conclusion of the Gospel of Luke. These notes reference the restoration of churches under the patronage of King Armaho. Scholars speculate that Armaho might correspond to King Arma of Aksum, who minted coins between 600 and 640. Getachu Haile, the translator of the manuscript's notes, leaves open the possibility that this notation corresponds to the period of the king's rule. The front covers of both manuscripts are also of considerable age. Garima I's cover is potentially contemporary with the manuscript itself, possibly making it one of the oldest book covers still attached to its original book. Crafted from gilt copper with wooden backing boards, its centerpiece is an elaborate cross motif. Empty settings within the cover could have once held gems. The cover of Garima II, dating from the 10th to 12th centuries, is fashioned from silver, as part of ongoing efforts, a 19th century church located at the monastery's periphery, initially constructed for female pilgrims, is undergoing renovation to serve as a housing facility for these invaluable manuscripts. Designed with small windows to minimize fading, the building will be fortified with steel bars and protected by armed guards. Insights from experts the introduction of the Garima Gospels beyond Ethiopia's borders transpired in 1950, when Beatrice Plain, a British art historian, embarked on a visit to the monastery. Since the monastery restricts the entry of women, the accommodating monks thoughtfully brought several manuscripts outdoors for her perusal. Plain recounted that, there were several illuminated manuscripts whose ornamental heading struck me as Syrian in style. In the 1960s, Jules Leroy, a French scholar, examined the manuscripts and suggested a dating around 1100 CE. Until recent times, only a handful of external scholars had the opportunity to examine the manuscripts. The Garima Gospels entered the sphere of biblical scholarship through microfilm images collected by Donald M. Davies, who astutely recognized their distinct antiquity compared to other extant Ethiopian manuscripts. Davies dated all three Garima Gospel books, including the once-bound Garima III with Garima II, to the 8th to 10th centuries. Utilizing Davies's photographs, 
Rakas Zermond employed the Garima Gospels as the foundational text for his comprehensive work on the Ethiopic Gospels. Zerman designated Garima I and Garima II as his AA class text, or Versio Antiqua, suggesting a text that might closely resemble the original. He highlighted that no subsequent Ethiopian manuscript could offer substantial insight into the original translation, except in cases where neither Garima text is available or readable. Zerman's dating of the Garima Gospel books diverged from Davies's assessment, with Zerman suggesting that they likely could not be placed later than the 13th century, possibly even a century or two earlier. Categorizing the text found in Garima I and Garima II, Zermond identified it as a free translation, maintaining Guizi idiomatic syntax and grammar while occasionally revealing limited familiarity with Greek grammar, vocabulary, and orthography. Later Ethiopic manuscripts stemmed from a comprehensive revision during the 13th century, aiming to provide more literal and accurate representations of Greek word order and terminology while aligning more closely with Egyptian Arabic versions. Stripping away these later alterations, Zerman classified the Garima texts as early Byzantine, observing instances in the Gospel of John where the Garima text departs from the later majority text, a version of the Byzantine text. Jacques Mercier, a French authority in Ethiopian art, examined the manuscripts at the monastery. Due to their deteriorating state, wherein they crumbled upon inspection, he was allowed to extract two small parchment fragments for carbon dating at the Oxford University Research Laboratory for Archaeology in 2000. These fragments were traced back to the 4th to 6th centuries and led Mercier to estimate a date around 600 CE based on stylistic elements. This aligns with Marilyn Heldman's suggestion in the catalog for the 1993 exhibition African Zion, The Sacred Art of Ethiopia. Heldman, who had earlier contributed notes on the illuminated pages of Garima I and Garima II, argued that their depiction of classical architectural forms and evangelist portraits aligned with the 6th century. Mercier's earlier dating proposition significantly impacted the revision of Zerman's work undertaken by Kurt Nickham. Nickham incorporated Mercier's carbon dating, accepting a 6th century origin for the Garima Gospels. He emphasized that this supports Michael Nibb's observation that Caleb Guizi Gospel inscriptions from around 525 CE share textual similarities with the Garima Gospels, diverging from later Ethiopic manuscripts. Nickham surmised that the translation of the New Testament into Guizi likely concluded in Aksum before the close of the 4th century. The identification of an Aksumite collection, of church canons and patristic excerpts in surviving manuscripts, confidently dated to the 5th century. Also bolsters the notion of Guizi gospel versions in late antiquity. In November 2013, a conference titled Ethiopia and the Mediterranean World in Late Antiquity, the Garima Gospels in Context, was held at the Ioannou Center for Classical and Byzantine Studies at Oxford. The Ethiopian Heritage Fund sponsored this event. As part of restoration efforts, Jacques Mercier obtained additional controlled fragments from both manuscripts, allowing for definitive radiocarbon dating, 390 to 570 for Garima II and 530 to 660 for Garima I. These dating ranges suggest that Garima II is likely earlier than the Syriac illustrated Rabula Gospels of 586 CE. Papers presented at the conference encompassed various topics, including the translation of historical notes found in the Gospel books by Gedichu Haile, iconographic and paleographic analyses, and 